Hello, welcome to this video. We're going to give you a straight and narrow introduction to MPLAB XIDE, creating an assembly language programming and debugging it. Um, it's a pretty complex software. We're going to stay right on the straight and narrow path uh, just to give you uh, one clear path to do it. So we're not going to get off the path too often, but every once in a while um, we'll explain something that's there. So uh, let's go back to the software. When you bring it up, this is what it looks like. Um, I already have started it, but in case you haven't started it and wondered how, uh, you want to go to MPLAB XIDE version 5.35. It's installed on your software somewhere. Don't start IPE, start IDE. I double click that and I started it. I'm going to get this out of the way and bring the MPLAB X IDE window up. Now, I've already have a project created on here and I'm going to show you how to start from scratch and wind up closing that project. So, uh, when we want to start a new project, file, um, new project, I'm clicking on file, clicking on new project, and up comes this window. Uh, we always want a microchip embedded selected that selected by default and we want to also choose a standalone project so I'm clicking on there and I'm gonna click on the next button and go to the next window um, now there's some options here all families I can come down here and pick and what I'm trying to do is zero in to the microcontroller I'm using uh, we're gonna use a pick 18 and that's in the advanced 8-bit MCU category so I click down I select that that'll limit my choices here and you can still see there's a lot of them there but I can just come right down in here and start to uh, type pick 18 F 452 because that's the microcontroller I'm gonna use it filters all that out I select that one by clicking on it and I have the microcontroller that I want to write a program for so once I get that all in there I'll click next click the next button left clicking that um, and for now we're gonna always run the simulator in the distant future we might not always choose that but for now we're gonna click to select the simulator to make sure that it's highlighted and click the next button uh, when you uh, process a program to run it if it's a high if it's a high level language program like C you're gonna run a compiler if it's a low level language like assembly language you're gonna run an assembler and the assembler that's in here I can access it by clicking on the minus button to or the plus button to expand that and selecting MPASM that's the name of the assembler so make sure you have that selected and do next you're gonna do this the same way every time you create a new program just have to answer these questions so um, the same way so you'll get used to it uh, click next and now we're at the point where we're gonna label the directory that it goes into so um, when it says project name it's actually you can see that when I type in here it's also expanding these names down here so I picked a project folder of C on my C drive work slash pick programs it's important to pick something that doesn't have any spaces in any part of the file name or the directory names um, when I type test up here you'll notice it says test.x and what it's going to do it's going to create a directory called test.x in that C work pick programs area of your hard drive and it's going to do that. If you're a student at, at using computers on Canvas, you're going to want to make that a USB drive location. And you don't want to make a long name and you don't want any spaces in the name. Um, that's going to give it a little bit of a headache. But otherwise, just type in the project name. Let all this do everything is here. Um, set as the main project. You probably want to make sure that's checked, but it usually is. And click Finish. And once I click finish, it's going to work on all the things that I just told it. And over on the left side here, it's going to create a project. Now notice I have a project called Bruce and a project called Test. Uh, I'm going to close this project. So I right click on Bruce and I close Bruce and I only have the test project open. 
Now, down here in the source files, if I click on this plus to expand it, and once again, clicking means left clicking, uh, you'll see that there's nothing in there. We want to uh, create our program in a file or assembly language program in a file and store it in here. So I'm going to right click on source files. I'm going to say new and they give us some templates that are very helpful. At this point we're going to do simple uh, template. That's what we're going to use. Uh, eventually I'm going to give you a, a template that's a little bit more uh, complex for some of the things we're going to do in the future. But for now, slick, simple and give it your name. So a lot of times I'll just give it the same name of the directory that's there. What's going to happen is a lot of files are going to be created in this process and they're all going to be stored in this directory. Um, you can give your file name anything you, uh, any name that you want, it's going to be stored in that directory. Once again though, don't put spaces in there, don't make them long. Uh, this pretty much works on an old DOS model, so it doesn't like spaces, some it'll uh, work with into it. And down here that'll show you, uh, based on me typing test in here, it's going to create a file in this directory called test.asm and asm is the source code file where we type our assembly language commands in. So I had added that, I click finish and by the way um, you can go take a look at these files in your normal file manager uh, program within um, Windows and see what it all created. Uh, I'm not going to do that here, but you can take a look at it until it's there. So now it lays the template down. So we're not going to change any of this code in here, uh, but it does let us a place. I'm going to hit a couple returns in here. It does have a place here where we can actually type commands. So I'm going to type a program in here, just a one I'm going to move a literal value into the W register, so I'll type MOVLW instruction, and I'm going to put hex value 3E in there. And this is one way to do the hex value and type it in, and, and we'll put a comment in there too while we're at it. Um, so we're going to say the W register is going to end up with the hex value uh, three five, and that program looks pretty good to me. All this other stuff is necessary, so don't change it. You're going to get an error, um, and things won't work right if you're there. There's some windows down here. Uh, different things are displayed, and we'll talk about them once again, just very quickly, so we can go right through this. What I'm interested in now is is um, assembling this program. I'm going to process it to create a file that can run. Uh, in there and this is the button up here there is a pull down for this button that says deb debug main project or launch debugger for the main project we're gonna click just click on that button and the output window um, should come up and it says it builds successfully if you didn't make any errors. It's a pretty simple program so we probably aren't gonna have any errors but you, you're gonna have to run with errors for a little bit um, and get used to them uh, and figure out what they are and figure out how to correct them before you do it. I've used this for a while so I'm not going to get too many errors here. The other thing I want to show you is this is now in debug mode and it's going to let us single step the program and it's sitting right at the top. That's not the default. So you might want to go to the tools menu, left click on that, go down to options and click on options and then go to the embedded tab at the top of that window. So I'm going to click on that and up comes this window and you can see I have a bunch of options here and I have a bunch of tabs but general generic settings is the tab that I want to be on. I come down through here and you'll notice it says debug startup and I pulled this down and selected hold it main you probably want to do that too because what ends up happening when you go into debug mode if the program runs on its own automatically, which is the default, you, you're probably not going to want to do that. You want to see things from the very beginning and what's there. So I would suggest uh, selecting halt on main, hitting OK. Once you do that one time, you won't have to do it again on your computer. So I already had it set up. I wanted to show you what's there. So we can see this little green uh, bar, and that's telling me what program instruction is ready to be executed. 
Um, and this button right up here in the top, if I hold on it for a little bit, it says it says step into F7, and that's what we want to do. This button is going to allow me to execute the instructions one at a time. And so when I click this button once, it's going to execute what's highlighted in the green. Uh, so we're at the go to instruction. We haven't highlighted it yet. When I click it once, left click it, F7, um, step into it did the go to and the go to goes to the start instruction which is this instruction there so that's exciting I executed an instruction in what we call simulate mode so I can see what's going on now I'm ready to execute um, the instruction that I entered which is going to move a literal into the uh, W register so these um, tabs down below here which show you what's happening uh, you can look at the file registers, you can look at the SFRs, and you can look at something called the watch window, which you can, um, they put some things in there for you, but you can modify this. That's for a future video. Right now, I'm interested in this W register, and you can see its value right now is 00, zero. Um, in hex, it's 0 in decimal and 0 in binary. I added those uh, two tab windows by right-clicking and choosing binary and decimal. You might not have that by default, but that's how you add that. So we didn't execute this instruction yet, but we can see that the W register has 00, zero in it, and after we execute this instruction, it should have 35 hex in there. Um, also, another really quick aside, there's all kinds of places to see stuff, but up here at the top of the window, this W colon 0x0 is also showing the contents of the W register, just not with as much detail. So I'm going to go and single step this, and it's going to execute this move with move literal to W instruction. And you can see that the W register, its, it's contents turned red, which means it recently changed. And it changed to 0x35, which is another way to... Uh, say that this is a hex value. So 35 hex is into the W register now. Um, it's sitting at the next instruction. The next go to instruction says loop to itself. So if I hit the F7 key, it'll just keep on looping to itself and no other values or useful things for us to look at because our program was very simple. But that steps you um, creating a program, assembling the program, and then debugging or single-stepping the program so that you can watch different registers to see what happens. So that's our really quick run-through. Um, hopefully that uh, gets you back here as a resource in case you run into problems with what's there, but you, you'll be doing this 100 times till, till you're done, so you'll know exactly what to do. Um, and we'll give you more detailed uh, adding things there. I, I'd say pushing off the path just a little bit, adding some detail to what, we, uh, what we've shown you as you go along. But this is what you're going to have to be able to do by yourself exactly the same way every time you create a new program.